We all know that people use uh, uh, Facebook as a performance platform. People, people project uh, a persona onto Facebook and, and they achieve a certain status on Facebook based on what appears on Facebook. Mm. Um, what is the risk of, of, of the same phenomenon happening with enterprise social media? In other words, you get all these people who appear to be incredibly innovative and, and, and uh, productive on this particular platform, are they projected in this particular way? Are there ways of actually measuring the efficiencies that are being created? Because, because all of this stuff conceptually makes so much sense. It, may, it, it, it makes corporations that use these tools sound, sound like they can become these very ideal workplaces where everyone is being productive and being encouraged and, and, and all the best workers are rising to the top. But are they only rising to the top on this platform, or is it is it, are we me, are you able to measure what the impact is in terms of real productivity? So three three responses. First is, what's new about that? I mean, it's not like people did not show up at work and play games at work, and it's not like people don't project their image at work. You know, dress for success. Why do people walk around in ties? Like a tie is a totally non-functional piece of clothing. It's entirely symbolic. They're just trying to convey meaning. Uh, so I think that already happens at work. Uh, the second point is, yes, and we're just at the beginning of this, but we're already starting to plug Ripple into all the web-based, cloud-based systems where people do work. I mean, it's actually kind of astonishing. Every existing H HCM software, and I'm focused because that's our place of, of focus, but none of them integrate with, like, where people actually do work. Right? Like, isn't that crazy? Like, that, that, that you don't tie the performance system into, like, your customer support system, your engineering system, your CRM system. Nope, that data is not really relevant. That's crazy, and that's changing. I mean, that's what we're doing. We'll be announcing stuff for the next few months uh, about how we're changing that, so I think absolutely you can. And I think the third point, and this is something we talked about earlier, is, is um, and this is sort of the broader trend, is that what's happening is the values of the web are coming inside companies. And the web itself is not a neutral thing, right? Like the web, when we talk, like the internets, you know, the things that the kids will talk about, the it has a value s system. And it values transparency, it values openness, and it values non-hierarchy. It values like people who contribute and get rewarded for actually contributing to the community. I think Gary made that point, right? It's not like Linux, everyone likes to point this as a wonderful open source thing. It's a dictatorship, right? Linux Torvald decides what gets in and what gets out. But, the way that you move up that hierarchy is by writing good code, fixing good bugs, and helping other people, not by you know, wearing a tie. So I think that's what's happening inside these organizations. And that's what you know, a company that looks with a clear eye and says, I'm here to be productive, that's what they're going to care about. I want to reward the most productive people. And I don't really care how good they are at playing politics. I care about what their contributions are. And I would argue that starting to rewire our businesses with these type of systems will make it easier, not perfectly easy, but easier to figure out who's actually adding that value.